Hello fourth grade. Today we're doing our first day on fractions. We're going to be understanding equivalent fractions and it's our first day of it. Now fractions are something that you learned in second grade and in third grade. But here in fourth grade, we're really going to dive in and see what we can do with them. So before we go into the actual lesson, since we're looking at fractions again, some of us may not remember exactly what a fraction is. A fraction is when you're taking a part of a whole. So, for example, we have a whole here that has two pieces. One, two. One of them is shaded in, so this would be one half. Over here, we have three parts. One, two, three. But only two are shaded in. So we'd have two thirds. And down here, we have one, two, three, four parts, but only three are shaded in. So we'd have three fourths. Now there are two words you're really gonna need to know when we're doing fractions. They are numerator and denominator. When looking at a fraction, the top number is always the numerator. The bottom number is always the denominator. So in one half here, the one is on top and would be the numerator. The two is on the bottom and would be the denominator. I'm going to be using those words a lot, numerator and denominator. So they're things that you're going to need to know. But now, Let's jump into the actual lesson and see what we can do with fractions. All right, so today we're going to be learning about equivalent fractions. Equivalent means equal. So if you see the word equivalent, just think the word equal. There's no difference. So right here, I have one half. There's two parts to the whole, and I have one colored in. So it's one half. One is the numerator, two is the denominator. But what would happen if I took my one half, which is the same down here, and instead I changed it by putting a line through it? I didn't change the size of my box. My box is still the exact same size. I didn't change how much I colored in. Look, they're the exact same. What I changed was how many parts there are and how many parts are colored in. So down here we have two fourths. But if I didn't change anything except put a line in the middle, can we conclude something? I think we can conclude that one half is equal to two fourths. And that's what our pictures here show. All right, so let's do this again now with a different fraction. So here we're starting with four parts. One, two, three, four. Four parts to make the whole, and one is colored in. So one out of four is one fourth. Down here, we have the exact same drawing. We have one out of four, one out of one, two, three, four. But now, like here, I'm gonna put a line through the middle. Again, I didn't change the size. I didn't change the amount that was colored in. All I changed was how many parts to the hole there was. I went from four parts, one, two, three, four, to eight parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now two parts, one, two, are colored in. So we have two out of eight makes two eighths. But since I didn't actually change my picture or change the amount that was colored in, that must tell me something. What it tells me is that 
1 fourth is equal or equivalent to 2 eighths. So that's one way to figure out if a fraction is equivalent. You can do it drawing pictures. But there's actually another way that involves using multiplication to see if two fractions are equivalent. Let's see how to do that. So we just learned how to see if a fraction is equivalent based off of our pictures and drawings. But there's actually another way to do it, which is by using multiplication or times. So I want us to look at these two numbers here, one half and two fourths. You might notice something. If you multiply both the numerator, the top number, and the denominator, the bottom number, by 2, you're going to get 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. You're going to get 2 fourths. And that should make sense, because when we drew our picture, we had 2 total, and we doubled it. We multiplied it by 2 to have 4 total. And we had 1 colored in, and we doubled it, multiplied it by 2 to have 2 colored in. So if you multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, in this case 2, they're always going to be equivalent. Let's see if it works on our second problem. So on the top we have 1 fourth. We have 4 total, 1 shaded in, so 1 fourth. And on the bottom we have 2 shaded in and 8 total, 2 eighths. Well, like before, in order to, to make this, all I did was double it. We had 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I multiplied it by 2. So then we had 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And for our shaded in section, we had 1, and I multiplied it by 2 again. 1 times 2 is 2. 1, 2. So if we had taken our 1 fourth, and we wanted to find out what's the equivalent fraction, if you double it, we'd multiply the top by 2, the numerator, multiply the bottom by 2, the denominator, and we would get 2 eighths. Eventually, this is going to be the main way that we do it. This is the mathematical way to do it. But for now, if the pictures are the way that helps you the best, that's okay. So, now we're going to move on to our independent work. So now we're going to begin by going over our problem set. I'm going to do one with you, and then you're going to go and do the rest all on your own. So, for our problem set, the first thing you're going to do is put your name in. I know we're all fourth graders and we already know this, but just as a reminder, you need both a first and a last name. Not just your first name and not just your last name. You need both. Now, let's go over number one. It says, use the area models to help you determine equivalent fractions. And so we have our picture below. According to the area model, what is an equivalent fraction for one half? So if I look at my box here, I'll see that we have a one out of two. So that's our one half. But they've already helped us out here by giving us a dotted line in the middle to show us that now we have 1, 2, 3, 
four, and two of them are shaded in. So that lets me know that one half is equal to two, one, two, over four. One, two, three, four. So all I did was use the picture again in front of me to find equivalent fractions, two fractions that are the same. You're going to do questions three, four, five, and six on your own. But the process is the exact same. For questions three and four, the dotted lines have already been given to you. So you don't need to draw those. On questions five and six, I have not drawn the dotted lines for you. So it might be helpful for you to do that in order to find the answer to the question. Good luck, and let's see how you do. All right, everybody, that finishes today's lesson on understanding equivalent fractions. Make sure you do your two pages of work and have a great day. I'll see you later.